Howdy, if you freak out, it is Ms. Kosh. I wanted to work through the notes created by Ms. Um, Vicki Carter. Um, so I have been teaching this probably a little bit differently for many, many years, and I'm gonna keep doing that. Um, but I did wanna make videos in case your teacher is using these notes. You can kinda um, see if I help you make sense of it. The good news, bad news is that I haven't looked at this yet. <laughs> so um, the first thing we wanna talk about is, well, and the way that I describe this one is, well, it's what she said. The x value is cosine of the angle. The y value is sine of the angle. And so when you look, and then the, the radius on the unit circle is 1. And so a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And so we write that like this. And we have nicknamed it at our school the Big Daddy. We had a teacher. Um, she was, I found out later she was my, she is my mom's age. She retired a number of years ago. And then that's when I took over teaching pre -cal. Um And she was a very southern lady and um People, the, the students loved her and hated her. She was tough. I mean, you learned a whole lot in her class. But she was real, she had this drawl about how she said things and she called this the Big Daddy. And the point is that it's really, really important. So important that we've nicknamed it here at our school, the Big Daddy. Okay, um, and so what I do when I teach this um, initially is then I come through and this is, we nickname it the Big Daddy, but it's called a Pythagorean. Uh, oh, well, it's a Pythagorean identity. That's what I should have circled. Um, and then there's a few others. So we can always, what I'll do when I teach this is I'll come along and say sine squared plus cosine squared theta equals one. I can solve for different things. So if I solve for cosine squared, that's equal to one minus sine squared. Um, one thing I want to make very clear to you, that doesn't mean that cosine is equal to one minus sine. That's a mistake I see my kids write. They'll be like, oh, let's just square root everybody. Oh, that doesn't work. Think about this for a second. If I say um, the square root of three squared plus four squared, well, this is equal to nine plus 16. Nine plus 16 is 25. Square root of 25 is five. Okay, if you say what's the square root of three squared plus the square root of four squared, well, this is three plus four, that's seven. And if you think those are equivalent, I'm gonna give you $5 million and you can give me $7 million back <laughs> or whatever, just kidding. Okay, but so point being, never, 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 never say that sine of theta is equal to one minus cosine theta. This is wrong, absolutely positively wrong. Sine squared is equal to one minus cosine squared. Um, where was I? Okay. Same idea, we can solve for sine. I think I just did that one. So sine squared would be equal to one minus cosine squared. Okay, then the next thing that I like to do when talking about the Pythagorean identities is I divide everybody um, by uh, cosine squared. And so when I do, sine over cosine, well, is tangent squared. Cosine squared divided by cosine squared is gonna be equal to one. Oh, I need a plus sign. And then I have equals one over cosine squared is secant squared. I think I have other videos that probably did a better job of that, but I, whatever. Okay, one is equal to, you can go find search trick identities on my YouTube page, you'll find tons. Okay, and so we can use this identity. Now, you'll notice this is the difference of squares. So there's a lot we can do with this, and these are the difference of squares. So you'll see these show up, well, I assume we'll see them show up all the time. I don't really know the AP curriculum yet because nobody does. Okay, so then we also have tangent squared is equal to secant squared theta minus one. Then I can also come back to that original one and divide by sine squared. So that's one plus cotangent squared is equal to divide this by um, sine squared and it's cosecant squared theta. By the way, I sometimes forget to say the theta, but I never forget to write it. If you forget to write it, you're wrong. So we have to have that. Um, cosecant has no meaning without an angle, or none of them have any meaning without the angle. So then we can manipulate this and say this is cosecant squared theta minus one, and we can say one is equal to cosecant squared theta minus cotangent squared theta. So do I have all nine of these memorized? No, I have this one memorized, and then I can manipulate to get the others. So either by dividing by cosine squared or dividing by sine squared, and then adding and subtracting or subtracting. Cool, okay, show that this is true. Um, so when I do these proofs, um, I expect you to start on one side, stay on one side, and turn it into the other. Um, I don't love problems like this because this problem is this identity over here, and I just see that as an identity. Um, what would I do if I told you to prove that? I guess start on, um, anytime I expect you to do an identity, you pick a side, you stay on it, and turn it into the other side. So this would be one over sine squared theta, 
minus one. Then we could say this is um, one minus sine squared theta over sine squared theta. One minus sine squared theta is equal to cosine squared theta over sine squared theta. There is not enough room here. Um, cosine over sine is cotangent, and so this equals cotangent, oh, C, O, T squared theta, there we go. Okay, something like that would be what I would expect you to do for a proof. Um, use Pythagorean theorem to express this in terms of cosecant. Okay, one plus cotangent squared, I would expect you to tell me that one plus cotangent squared is equal to cosecant squared. Cosecant squared x times sine x. Well, cosecant is one over sine, so cosecant squared is one over um, sine squared x times sine x. Okay, and then there are there's one sign in the top and there are two signs in the denominator, giving us this is one over sine x, which is cosecant x. Pythagorean identity did, uh, Pythagorean identity expressed this in terms of cosecant. It was equal to, oh, I'm sorry, it was equal to cosecant. Okay. Um, so the next one, they want us to write this in terms of cosine. Well, when I see 1 minus sine squared, I know that that's equal to cosine squared. Um, because there's not a lot of room, I always, always, always expect my identities to be done systematically down the page. I'm going to give you space to write one line beneath the, the next and that sort of thing. Um, these are my favorite things to teach you all, so I expect, um, I have high expectations for you. Okay, so this becomes cosine squared x, because 1 minus sine squared x, do, 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 1 minus sine squared was equal to cosine squared. And um, this becomes 3 cosine of x. Okay. Um, let's see, what's the next one? Okay, you know what? I'm going to stop the video. She then goes into some of the other identities, and um, I will pick up the next one with a sum and difference. So come back for that one. Subscribe to my channel. We'll see you later.